Oh. <laughs> All right, first things first, I gotta get rid of this fence behind me. The gate sections I have to unbolt and I gotta move those out of the way. Then I'm gonna use a rotary hammer to knock down that wall. I was gonna rent one. They're about $65 to rent a rotary hammer, which is a smaller demolition hammer or kind of a jackhammer. For $90, I can buy one at Harbor Freight and I figure two rentals and it's cheaper to actually buy and own the Harbor Freight. So I went that route. Well, I'm about to use it for the first time and see if I can take down this wall. Let's have a laugh, shall we? Didn't like that piece anyway. I got my Bauer rotary hammer. I got eye protection. I got ear protection. I got a little respiratory protection. So let's see what happens. So far it's working pretty good. A little slower than I thought. This is worthless. Seen that in reviews before. It will not stay on. So I'll have to play with that. I figured I couldn't do it all with the rotary hammer. There was gonna be some sledgehammer involved. Destruction is fun. The Bauer rotary hammer worked really well. Like I said, it was 90 bucks. I got it on sale, it was $10 off. It uses the smaller bits. It was really hard to tell which bits it used. There's a larger bit for, I believe, the demolition hammer. And it seemed like it would go in here. And the smaller bits seem too small, but there's a pack of three and I'll, I'll link to a picture. So it's the smaller ones, because no one could tell me the answer. And it said a size on the box of the rotary hammer, but it did not say a size on the uh, on the bit. So anyway, it works great. It's very tiring to use, as you can imagine. Then again, so is the sledgehammer. To tighten the uh, handle, you rotate the handle. You can move it around position wherever you want, and then you just screw it down and tighten it down. I think I saw a review where a guy was, he was talking about how he couldn't get this to uh, tighten, and it won't because it's for the depth shaft. Anyway, it had me going for a minute too. I don't blame the guy. It, as opposed to a rental, I think this is a great choice. It worked great. It's good build quality. I don't know how long it'll last, but it'll last longer than I'll ever use it. So I think, you know, for the price, it's well worth going this route. For the most part, the block is pretty easy. This, the block in the middle is pretty easy. Obviously in the ends where they pour the concrete and put the rebar, that's a lot harder to get through. It seemed a little easier in some places to use a sledgehammer. So I also got this S-Wing sledgehammer. I like to kind of rubberize grips. I don't know if that helps at all. Maybe make it a little less painful. I got an eight pounder as opposed to a 10 pounder because uh, I don't know, it seemed just uh, that much more work to swing the 10 pounder. This seemed like it worked for me. It got through what I need to get it through. So one more thing. This is basically a little handheld jackhammer. It's also a hammer drill, which means, you know, it's a drill. It rotates. Be very careful and do not put it in drill mode and ham your hammer drill mode when the shaft is stuck in the concrete because it will twist your wrist off. I accidentally did that once on this process. It was not pleasant and you could hurt yourself pretty bad. So be really careful when using this. Obviously, I was using a lot of personal protective equipment and I know, you know, we don't do that all the time, but we should. And with something like this, it's really loud. It's really bad for your hearing. The dust in the block is, is, I believe it has silica, which is really bad for you. Look, I'm no doctor, but hey, why not err on the safe side with that? I used a good quality 3M mask and I had glasses on, but I still put uh, eye protection over my glasses on top of that because there's, you know, chunks of concrete and potentially metal flying around. So be safe when you're using this stuff. As soon as the demo was done, it was off to the dump. I also made sure to have a set of large plans that were easy to read on site, and I posted my permits as per the directions. Then it was off to clean out the garage. Good times. I had to make sure there was room to cut a hole in that wall, and I cleaned up the work site. I moved that gravel and got rid of anything that might have been in the way. Future Dean here again. So I talked about the different hammers a little bit as I was doing the work, but I wasn't really that familiar with them. I, you know, I've rented one before, I've used one before. So this is a rotary hammer, which is, has a hammer function, like a, you know, a chisel or a jackhammer, a handheld jackhammer. Uh, but it also has a drill function, you can do those together. So there's hammer drills, there's rotary hammers, which are bigger. There is demolition hammers bigger than that. I didn't realize that some of the bigger ones might not have the rotary part. And I'm glad I bought the tool that did, 
as I dug the trench to run the wiring to the foundation, I needed to chip away a little bit of concrete down there. This made easy work of that, so I was pretty happy with that. Then I realized I have to drill holes for the ledger board that'll hold up the roof on the house side of the garage addition. I need to drill a one inch hole, and I had to go buy some different bits. There was a $15 uh, multi-pack of bits. This is an SDS shank that goes in this rotary hammer. I, had to, I bought a pack of those at Harbor Freight, but then I also went and bought some Milwaukee bits at uh, Home Depot. They were much more expensive. I think I paid $85 for two bits. I got a seven eighths and I got a one inch because I'm not 100% sure of the hole. It's a three quarter inch uh, threaded rod that I'm gonna epoxy into the wall and I have to make sure the hole is just the right size. I need all the tools on hand to do it. And you know what? I'm gonna use the rotary hammer to drill that. Even though I have a hammer drill, I don't think my hammer drill would handle a one inch bit. So I'm glad I have this tool. Once again, for $90, I think it's a great thing for a, a DIY homeowner to have on hand. Anyway, that's it for now. Next up, Jorge and his crew show up, cut a hole in that wall and install that lentil. And you know what? It's a dusty mess, so I'm glad I didn't do it. There's a link in the description for that video, and it'll be up here on the screen at the end of the video. So please click on that, check it out. And remember, if I can pay to do it, you can pay to do it.